Vice President Kamala Harris is hoping to win over Republican voters opposed to the reelection of former President Trump. Her campaign now launching a program called Republicans for Harris. The campaign has revealed several endorsements for the VP from high profile GOP figures from across the country, including our next guest, Denver Riggleman, formerly represented Virginia's 5th Congressional District has advised the January 6th committee at a high level uh, during its work in recent years, has recently worked uh, with Hunter Biden as he has faced different legal issues. Uh, Congressman, always good to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Mr. Cost. Uh, Congressman, I'm going to play a clip for you from a recent Trump rally where he talks about the Georgia Republican Governor Brian Kemp. Let's listen. But Kemp doesn't want to end it because he's a bad guy, he's a disloyal guy, and he's a very average governor. Little Brian, little Brian Kemp, bad guy. When you hear former President Trump, Congressman, go after a popular Republican governor like Brian Kemp, what does that mean for this group, Republicans for Harris, and for people like yourselves who have found themselves very uncomfortable with the direction of the GOP in the last decade? Well, and thanks for having me. I think it's part of the equation why there are so many Republicans that are supporting Vice President Harris. I mean, Trump has always valued loyalty over competence. Look at the people that he hangs around with, you know, Cash Patel, Mike Flynn, Patrick Byrne, Roger Stone. I mean, these people are either felons or they're criminals or they're whack jobs. And I think that's really what, you know, President Trump is. He surrounds himself with sycophants and yes men and yes women. And real Republicans, you know, people who've served a long time, they're much more independent. And they look at what he's doing and even his policy positions, how he treats people, his misogyny. It's just ridiculous. And I just don't think that there should be people that are supporting felons, rapists, insurrections, or conspiracy theorists or all the above. And when you get that full bag of crap right there that I just mentioned, there's going to be a lot of Republicans not voting for Trump this year. What about Virginia? Uh, you know Central Virginia and Virginia so well, having run for office there and won. Is this a state that Democrats can really try to protect as part of the blue wall in the mid-Atlantic southern region of the country? Yeah, I think I think Vice President Harris wins Virginia. I, I just don't think it's going to be that close of a race. I think you're going to see four to six points like you've seen in some of the last elections. And a lot of that has to do with, I do believe, Virginia has always been a pretty independent, independently minded state. I know there's still 25 to 30 percent of Republicans who think President Trump is maybe clinically insane. So I think that's part of the allure of Vice President Harris. And it comes down to this. In Virginia, I do believe sanity still matters. And I'm hoping in the entire United States that sanity is the baseline for when people pick a presidential candidate or they vote for somebody. And I want to say right now, it's a 10 to 1 favor that Vice President Harris is beating President Trump in the sanity to the insanity category. And again, when you see what he says about, you know, Kemp, or you see what he says about Kamala Harris herself and some of the racist remarks, there's just no way that, that people like me and I think people like Adam Kinzinger and other individuals can, can support somebody like a Donald Trump. Congressman, when you were working uh, as a top advisor to the January 6th committee, you studied uh, different extremist groups across the country. You studied conspiracy theories and how they're playing into our political, political discourse. And you also put an emphasis on democracy. President Biden, when he was in the Democratic race, in the presidential race, talked a lot about democracy. Do you believe Vice President Harris and this Republicans for Harris group are going to underscore that issue at every turn, or is that more of a Biden issue than a Harris issue? How do you see democracy playing out? It's the number one factor for voting, and I think that's sort of why they have me here, uh, is to actually go ahead and, and take a, you know, a intellectual baseball bat to conspiracy theorists. I mean, you have a president or a former president who came out on True Social wearing a Q pen. Somebody said he's going to pardon the J6 riders. It's just ludicrous. And, you know, I'm the one who saw the text messages. It was our team, as you know. And when I, I called them the bourbon text because you had to have a drink after you see the crazy of the Meadows text messages. But when you see the insanity in there, it's the same people in January 6th that are running things like Project 2025. It's not just what happened in the past, is that past performance is indicative of future performance. And when you see people like that still surrounding the former president, you got to think that his second term, if he were to be elected, is going to be insane. It's going to be chaos. 
It's going to damage our reputation globally. And I think it's going to damage our internal democratic institutions and structures. Again, that's why you're seeing Republicans for Harris right now, because there's no way we can allow that to happen, especially people like me who've seen the data. We've done the work. We've seen the facts-based insights. And we know how crazy that day was and how insane conspiracy theories drove a lot of those individuals to attack the Capitol that day. And that is not something that I want to see happen again. Congressman, I've fully read your book, The Breach, where you detail all of the different movements across the country, how they're connected on a social media level, uh, on, the, on the web in, in different ways. As you look ahead to November and post-election 2024, what concerns you, if anything, about what could happen uh, in the post-election period if it, if it does become a contested election? You know, violence is always there, and it seems to have been normalized. I mean, we can look at the assassination, assassination attempt of the former president and say that's awful. We can look what happened with Paul Pelosi. But you're seeing the type of language right now, the dehumanization and the language that's happening across the spectrum. I think it could get really nuts. And if Donald Trump loses, which I think he will, I do think you're going to see violence in state capitals. I think you're going to see certain individuals in certain areas going after specific politicians. Those are the things that frighten me. We know that it's happened in the past. We see the type of language today. We see the sort of this anti-Semitic pro-Nazi stuff. We see Islamophobes. We see so much going on right now in social media. And I think that's what scares people like me who study terrorism for so long, is that people like Donald Trump, who's that irresponsible, who talks about violence, who talks about, you know, certain individuals or they're awful and things like that. It's just, it's absolutely irresponsible. And I, and I do worry that 2024 is going to be, sadly, could be more violent than even January 6th. An ominous warning, Congressman Denver Riggleman, author of The Breach, former advisor to the January 6th committee, among many other activities. Congressman, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir.